In this video, I want to go over a little bit more about layers, as I get a lot of questions from students regarding, are layers important whenever I'm working in, this case, pixel artwork? Overall, from a multimedia standpoint, layers are extremely important, and they're something that you're not going to be able to get away from. We utilize layers in all sorts of programs, including 3D modeling and animation programs, video editing programs, audio editing programs, and also graphic-based programs as well. So while it may not look identical across the board whenever you're working with layers, you are going to have some form of layers available to you. Another question I often get is, can I ignore layers? Not particularly. Layers are a means that we can organize our graphics or organize our audio or models, whereby we have control as far as showing, hiding, locking down elements that at some point, maybe either A, we don't need it anymore, so we could delete the layer without damaging or removing the rest of the graphic, and B, that you can go through and actually add in additional assets or try different things while, ever, while you're working with the layers. So this video's main goal is to help you understand and help you realize the importance of layers. Finally, regarding layers in general, one thing I wanna point out is, really, if you know layers in one software package, you can fumble your way through other software packages and find the layers. So for instance here, since a lot of my videos for these, uh, this cluster for my one class focus on graphic scale, I'd like to zoom in here and talk a little bit more about layers in graphic scale. Similar to other software packages, graphic scale has a layers panel. Sometimes the layers panel may not be as obvious. For instance, graphic scale, they put their layers panel on the left-hand side. Meanwhile, software packages such as GIMP and Photoshop, they actually put theirs on the right-hand side in the lower right-hand corner. However, each software package, no matter what you're working with, is always gonna start out with a default layer. And often one running gag with all of these software packages is they use the worst naming schema possible. They name their layers by numbers. I have seen projects and worked in projects where you can have almost anywhere up to 20 and 30 layers. If you're allowing the software package to just name your layers for you, layer one, two, three, etc., it can get difficult to track. This is the importance here in graphic scale as far as the properties is concerned, or the three dot button. This is a great way that you can come in here and you can name your layer. So maybe I name the layer ball base. I'll say okay. And notice now how the name has changed here. So I can go ahead here. I'll choose the circle tool, choose a color on my color palette and go ahead and draw the circle there. You can now see in what we often call the thumbnail graphic in the layers, you can see what is actually on that layer there. Now also too, you have several options that are built directly into the layer tab here. The show and the hide, as far as the eyes opening and closing, and the locking and unlocking. Now, graphic scale does throw in a third type of lock where you can lock your transparent pixels. Most software packages though, it's an unlock, which as you can see is grayed out, and then a lock, which you can see now the L is bolded. Really, those are gonna be the biggest two that you are probably going to work with. But let's go ahead here now, let's add a second layer so that you can see how layers work together. I'm gonna to click on the drop-down menu and I'm gonna choose add. Like its counterpart here, it's popping up and asking as far as the properties go. So maybe I call this square base and say, okay. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and choose, in this case, I'm gonna choose the outline rectangle. I'm gonna choose a different color, maybe a green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this right over top here as far as the layout goes. So there you can see I have a nice outline as far as my object goes. Now this is where layers come in handy. One thing is, is first off, let's say that I actually changed my mind about the square base. I actually want it to be behind the ball. I can use the up and down arrows to move them up and down in the stack here. So if I click move down, you see now how the ball appears in front. 
change my mind, I can move up as well. Maybe I realized that I actually wanted the ball to be, you know, maybe more centered in the area here. I have a couple of options here. Number one, I could actually hide the layer. But the problem will be then is I'm kind of just guessing as far as where the ball should be placed. So what I can do is I can actually lock down my square base layer. And now I could come under the ball layer. I can come up and do, in this case, a rectangular selection, do a selection around the ball here and go ahead and move it. And notice despite its overlap and the square base being in front, when I did the selection, it didn't actually edit any part of the overall square there. It kept it locked down, it kept it in position, and kept it visible so I could use it as a guide. So I'm also going to go ahead here now and deselect, and now I could unlock, for instance, the square base, and then I'd be able to come in and lock the ball base. And let's say now I decide I change my mind, I'm going to do another rectangular selection, Oops, and actually that's a good demonstration there. I want to make sure I'm on the correct layer. I'm going to go ahead and select that square space. And notice now when I move that around, you see how it's overlapping the ball, but it's not actually doing any damage to the ball, but also too, it's not moving the ball as well. That's kind of the overall power of layers there. That's the important element behind them. So just to show you in a couple of other software packages here, let's go ahead and hop into the web-based, what we call Pascal. Another form of pixel editing. And the first thing that I normally do in a software package that I may not be familiar with is I'm going to look around and try to find out, you know, familiarize myself with the tools, which as you can see, really they're very similar. You have your move tool, you have your pencil tool or pen tool as they call it here, etc. But the one thing I'm looking for is right over here. Once again, you have a layers panel. So I could come in here and double click, and maybe I call this once again, let's call this circle base. And now I'll come over here and choose my circle tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose a different color here. And now I can come on over and draw my circle. Now, Pascal is a little bit different. It likes to do outlines first, so I'll grab this paint bucket and just fill in the circle. Now, what I can do here is create a second layer, and I'm going to call this square base. As you can see with Pascal, one difference here is when you make the new layer, notice how my circle has kind of gotten a little bit see-through here. This is Pascal's way of providing a notation to you that, hey, you're on a different layer. So I'm guessing if I go ahead and click on circle base, yep, there you can see it kind of comes in and fills in all the way. So let's go to square base. I'm going to choose that rectangle tool and I'll go ahead and choose a green. And I'll come back over here, kind of start that square again. And this time I'll also fill the square. So now you can see here, I have two layers here that I can actually move backwards and forwards, just like my counterpart. And I can also edit the layer name. I can preview all of my layers, or I can turn them on and off. And likewise as well, one interesting thing that you do have here is a layer opacity option, where I get a pop-up saying that it set the layer opacity between 0 and 1. So maybe I choose 0.75 and say OK. And so now it's changed as far as my overall layers is concerned, as far as the light and dark there. So once again, though, there's those layers kind of coming back and popping into um, your workflow there. Finally, I want to go ahead and jump into GIMP, which is our final software package I'd like to talk about here. GIMP, similar to Photoshop, you can see already in the UI here, down in the lower right hand corner, you have a layers panel. Now GIMP is a little bit different from say Pascal and GraphicScale where it doesn't so much actually keep all of the options on each individual layer. Instead what it likes to do, and I'll go ahead here and make a brand new file here, tell it okay. 
we'll magnify a second. What GIMP actually likes to do is it'll give you a preview as far as and give you the show and hide buttons and the lock button to control your layer. But as far as rearranging layers, you're dealing with just adding a new layer and then you're up and down as far as controlling the visibility of your layers is down at the bottom. A lot of the more advanced programs, this is kind of how they like to control their layers, is you add the layer, you have the standard show and lock options, but then the main controls and options when you're working with layers is located down near the bottom here. So now if I go ahead and add a new layer, it's going to ask me some information. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything as is and say OK. And now you can see not only do I have two layers here, but now I can either use the up and down arrows or a lot of software packages like this will actually allow you to click, hold, and drag as far as controlling your layers. So I hope this video helped to clarify layers a little bit across the different software packages. While in 2D pixel art, this may not seem very important as far as being able to just color over things, you're working with a small uh, width and height dimensions here. When you get into things like 3D materials, this can become very important as far as stacking and adding effects to your different objects and how they're going to look on your 3D models.